video is for remote workers, aspiring digital nomads, and couples who want to travel the world full-time on a budget. We'll be diving into how you can set yourself up financially to make full-time travel a reality. And we'll share our top money-saving tips that we've learned from five years of working online and traveling the world as digital nomads. This video is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be personal financial advice. And since we're from the U.S., a lot of this information pertains specifically to Americans because that's our lived experience. Before you start traveling full-time, we highly recommend that you have at least three to six months of saving in what we like to call an oh sh fund. Make sure that savings is enough to cover your basic lifestyle necessities. For the two of us, that's about two to three thousand dollars a month because can, will, and does happen. You might need to travel home quickly for a family emergency, or you might lose your main source of income and need some cash to tide you over. Both of those things have happened to us. Having that money set aside will give you peace of mind and make your journey all the more enjoyable. We keep our own fund in an easily accessible high yield savings account. Right now, we are getting an extra 4.7% of oh every month. If you're from the US, we highly recommend opening up a checking account with Charles Schwab Bank. In many parts of the world, cash is still king, so you're gonna be using ATMs. ATM fees typically range from five to $10 for every withdrawal and those fees add up fast. But if you have Charles Schwab, any and all ATM fees will be reimbursed at the end of the month, and you can use pretty much any ATM in the world. Our third piece of financial advice is having traveler's insurance that will cover you for any unexpected medical emergencies. We currently use Safety Wing, which is a very affordable monthly subscription. We've made videos comparing multiple travel insurance options for nomads that we'll link down below. So that's the general financial stuff out of the way. Now, let's get to the money-saving tips. Social media might have you believe that living as a digital nomad means you're constantly moving from place to place. And while some people might live that way, that's not the reality for the majority of full-time travelers. And there are some good reasons why. The number one way you're gonna save money as a full-time traveler is to slow down your pace of travel. Having that mindset is the whole foundation of making full-time travel a sustainable lifestyle. And it's important to note that traveling full-time is not a permanent vacation. When we started our digital nomad journey in 2018, we were trying to live like we were on a permanent vacation. We were flying way too frequently, doing lots of activities, and we were in a new place almost every week. And that was pretty awesome. But it also meant that we were constantly planning our next adventure, spending all of our money, and never really getting enough work done. Our lives had no balance, we were exhausted, and within eight months, we were nearly broke. We nearly gave up on our dreams of being digital nomads. But then we learned about slow travel, and that changed everything. Slow travel means spending more time in one place to connect with local peoples and other travelers, with an emphasis on food, culture, learning, and environmental sustainability. It also allows you to get into routines that are better for your physical and mental health. And as a couple, it gives you the time and space to pursue your individual interests. In 2022, we spent four months living in Albania. After a few days in the capital city of Tirana, we made our way down to the southern coastal city of Saranda, where we stayed for one and a half months. Spending more time there meant that we could get our work done and still have time to explore the surrounding areas on our days off and around our work schedules. Traveling slowly doesn't mean that you can never travel faster. We do plan one to four week trips where we take time off of work and visit multiple places in a short period of time. As online teachers, we're lucky to be able to design our own schedules. We wanted to see a lot more of Albania, so we took three weeks off to travel around the country. After those three weeks, we spent a month in Tirana and got back to work. We like to plan those trips when we're already in a country so we can learn from local people and other travelers about different places we can go and things to do that we might not have known about otherwise. And that insider knowledge also helps us to do things better and cheaper. The truth about being a remote worker is that you're actually living a pretty normal life most of the time. And when you're not working, you're in a new place. A typically boring activity like going to the grocery store suddenly becomes an adventure. What new things can you buy? How much does peanut butter cost here? You get to explore your surroundings and build new maps in your head. It keeps you mentally stimulated, and studies show that constant change increases your complex problem-solving skills. You feel more adventurous just living your daily life. So now that you understand what slow travel is and all of its benefits, let's get into the practical information about how slow travel can save you a ton of money. 
As we mentioned in a previous video, there are a lot of things that are significantly cheaper outside of the U.S. And number one is accommodation. The average cost of a one-bedroom apartment in the U.S. is $1,995 a month. It's even higher in our home state of California. In contrast, our accommodation costs while traveling full-time around the world range from $1,500 down to $0 per month. We'll explain how with the different types of accommodation we use. While short stays in Airbnbs can cost more than a hotel, especially with all those annoying cleaning fees, there is a way to drive down the cost significantly. Many Airbnb hosts will give you a discount if you book more than 28 days, sometimes even up to half off. We've booked long-term Airbnbs all over the world, like this lovely one-bedroom apartment in Plovdiv, Bulgaria, in a very central neighborhood where we stayed for five and a half weeks for $883. Another benefit of staying in an Airbnb is that they are usually in local neighborhoods. Another method to keep your accommodation costs way down is to not pay for accommodation at all. We house sit all over the world, caring for people's homes, pets, and gardens while they're out of town in exchange for staying in their homes for free. House sits can range from a few days to several months, and you can do them across the world or even in your own backyard. Another advantage of a house sitting is that you're staying in someone's home, and that comes with all the accoutrement that makes living in a house feel more homey. Comfy furniture, a blender, a PS5, the important stuff. And did we mention the pets? We love animals, and it's nice to have the company of furry friends while we work from home. In 2022, we traveled to five different countries, and we did house sits in three of them. Because of house sitting, we spent less than $5,000 on accommodation for the entire year. We won't go into all the details in this video, but if you're interested in international house sitting, you can watch our house sitting Q&A video. We'll link it down in the description box. Another way we find accommodation is through local Facebook groups. In many places, there are realtors or people looking for subletters in these groups. When we stayed in Saranda, Albania, we found that apartment through a realtor in a Facebook group. When we got there, we ended up choosing the first one he showed us. It was incredible and cost less than $400 a month, including utilities. We were there during the shoulder season, which is probably the biggest factor in why the price was so low. If we had tried to rent that place during the high season during the summer, it would have cost at least five times as much. And that brings us to our next point. Since you're the master of your own destiny with this full-time travel lifestyle, you get to choose when and where you travel. Of course, if you stick to countries that are less expensive, you're going to spend less money and some countries are a lot more expensive than others. For example, some countries in Western Europe are much more expensive than countries in Eastern Europe or Asia or South America. One surefire way to make visiting expensive places cheaper is to go during their shoulder season. If you do go to a tourist destination during the shoulder season, everything might not be open, but that could be a good thing, especially if you want to avoid the crowds. Another thing to consider is how long you want to spend in each country. Stevo and I usually spend one to six months in each country, and that usually depends on how long the tourist visa allows us to stay. The American passport is one of the top 10 strongest passports in the world. It allows US citizens to travel to over 180 countries visa-free or with a visa on arrival. This is a huge boon for our travels, and we are so grateful to hold American passports. Another thing we do to save money is we stick to one region of the world at a time rather than taking frequent long haul flights. That way you can take more on the ground transportation between countries and utilize the budget airlines. And that brings us to how you can save money on flights. Plane tickets can be one of the biggest travel expenses, but there are quite a few ways that you can drive the price down. Plus with slow travel, you're going to be taking fewer flights anyway, which also saves you a lot of money. The number one way to save money on flights is to be flexible with your dates and destination. We typically use Skyscanner to search for the best times to fly. Skyscanner allows you to see the price of plane tickets for an entire month at a time, so you can see if there's a price difference between flying from one day to the next. Just switching your flight by one day can save you hundreds of dollars. If you're an American, there are many great credit cards that offer high sign-up bonuses, so you can get heavily discounted or even free flights. Most recently, we signed up for a JetBlue credit card, which got us 40,000 sign-up miles. That was enough to get us from New York City down to Peru for only $350 for both of us. And we saved money on baggage because we both got a free checked bag, which is another perk of using that card. 
If you're trying to figure out which credit card might be best for you, you can check out the points guy. He has a lot of great information about the current deals that are going on with different credit cards. Another great way to save money on flights is through finding mistake fares. There's a lot more we can get into on how to save money on cheap flights. We've made an entire video just about this topic and we'll link that down below. Whether at home or abroad, food is often one of the biggest parts of any budget. And if you don't eat, you will die. So it's pretty important. Our food budget differs depending on where we are in the world. For example, if we're in Thailand, we'll eat out for one or two meals a day because it's so affordable and it's also a part of Thai culture. Many Thai apartments don't even have full kitchens because it is so normal to eat out there. Conversely, when we're in the UK, we tend to cook at home a lot more often because eating out is just unaffordable. Even a simple lunch at a pub, with a pint of course, will run you 40 to 50 pounds, whereas we can get an entire week's worth of groceries for around 100 to 150 pounds. No matter where we are in the world, we always try to shop at the local markets. The produce is usually better, local, and more affordable. Plus, we can go back to the same vendors again and again and have conversations with them, practice the local language, and sometimes even become friends with them. On average, we try to keep our food budget between $600 and $1,000 every month. With all these ways to keep our costs down while traveling the world full time, we spend roughly $2,500 a month on everything. Sometimes more, sometimes less, but that's the average. If you want to know more about house sitting and getting free accommodation all over the world, check out this video. We'll see you there.